Welcome back to Maintenance Man on a Budget. Today we're going to replace the front disc rotors. And um, as you can see here, we got two issues. One issue is the rotor itself. You can see it's pretty worn down. It's got some markings on it. Ah, it didn't come out too good. And the other issue is we got two broken studs. So this is a 2010 Honda Sonoda. So the reason we wanted to inspect the brakes is um, we changed the brake pads on it a few months ago and noticed that after a little while of driving, when you press the brakes, they started to make a slight grinding noise. Well, what happened is that grinding noise got more and more as we kept driving it. So we decided to pull them back off and yeah, you can see here, it's pretty it's glossed over. You've got some slight groovings, but you can clearly tell something's happening. And um, the brake pads themselves aren't that bad. Well, it's kind of hard to see there, but um, I'll take it apart. And then at the same time, we just busted one of these loose, and then that one was previously broke from a tire shop. So I went ahead and got new disc brake rotors and new lug nut studs and new lug nuts. And we're going to knock those out and replace them. So the first thing you do is there's two main bolts and I think those were 17 millimeter that hold the back caliper in place these two guys and then this whole thing will come off instead of just taking out the caliper itself I'm taking the whole bracket off and I'm going to set it out of the way and we're going to slide this disc off okay so took those off and if you can see the brake pads, they're not that bad. And then the next step is to get the rotor off. And obviously it's not gonna just come gliding off easy, so you get a nice rubber mallet. And just kinda tap it around. Work that loose, and we'll do that now. Okay, I forgot to mention uh, you got two screws that are threaded through that kind of hold it onto the. So make sure you unscrew those first before you start tapping off. So we got that off, and now the second part is <clears throat> to get these studs through. Um, there's a little groove here that I'm going to try to get the new ones through. So what I'm going to do first though is get this disc rotor out the way and I'm going to tap that through with a hammer and a pin, pop that out and see if I can slide the new one right here where this is cut out. I locked that. I looked at some other videos online where they were having to cut those off because they couldn't get the bolt through. So we'll see if we can do it that way. Okay, so I got it to go through, but that's not going to be enough for me to get get on there and pull that out. So what I'm going to do is get this thing in neutral and rotate this to about here. And I'm going to cut a little section off right here where I can get my fingers and pull it out. And then slide the new stud through there. Um, looks like I won't be able to get away with cutting it. All that is is a dust guard, but I don't like cutting things if I don't have to. And so I'm just looking at what would be the easiest way if I can just rotate this over here and then, yeah. So I'm going to get my tin snip, my wire cutter, my uh, shear cutters and cut a nice hole there to get in and pull that, that stud out. And then I can swing it around and get this one out next. But all I did was just tap that loose nice and easy until I got through. All right, so I got the opening and uh, I got to pound that loose. So that comes out easy. Well, when you're put, putting the new ones in, it won't, it doesn't want to get in there because it's just slightly pushed up. And instead of dramatically forcing 
and beating that one back through, I'm going to grind down a little flat spot, a little flat spot. So we'll do that now. All right, there we go. All right, and then I did have to kind of push it with my screwdriver here, but it got it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is get a couple washers on there. And I bought an extra, an extra lug nut that I'm gonna use the same lug nut for these two and then just keep this out of my garage. That way I don't damage and I can put two brand new lug nuts on these because I brought some extras. Um, so we'll do that now. And they just get pressed in. All right, I just wanted to show how I was doing it. So I got that in and let's go ahead and break this loose. Lovely, lovely. So, take that off. Now, I was struggling with using one of these closed lug nuts. And like I said, this one will not be getting reused. I'm going to use it for the next one. And I just used, found an old, use this as a spacer. But we got it pressed all the way flush. And so now we'll do the same thing with this guy. Of course, I'll need to get two hands on this, but anyway, you guys get the idea, and we'll th thread that one down tight, and then we can proceed with the original job. All right, now we can proceed. And just to show you how bad these old ones looked, you can see how hot they got. There's some definite excessive heating going on. Oh yeah, no way, no friends. So now what we're gonna do, this is the new one. I'm just using a Duralast that I got from AutoZone. I like to spray them and just clean them up before I do that. And um, I'm actually gonna use two hands and do the other side and get this one, put the two screws in and get it back on the hub. And there it is, brand new rotor. And just make sure you spray it all nice and clean. And I already rotated it to make sure there was no dragging. I had to go back and clip up some more of what I cut and kind of hammer it down a little bit so it stayed out of the way of the new rotor from some of the cuttings that I did. All right, now the next step is to go ahead and swing this brake caliper right back on get that bolted back on and we're done all right so I had to take the caliper off to get it back on so um, pads came out and the back one is the two back bolts that hold the bracket to hold the caliper is 17 socket millimeter and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the brake pads back. And since I got those off, we're gonna just clean it one more time, best I can. All right, all well, that's cleaning up. And this is the front pad. So the front pad still looks somewhat okay. Go ahead and put those back. All right, so I got those torqued. So on the back, there's a 17 and a 17. And then the caliper, I went ahead and compressed the piston in. It went in nice and smooth. That's another check you can do to make sure the pistons aren't getting seized up on you. Both brake pads are back on. Sprayed them down. 
And now I'm going to take that C clamp off, slide the caliper back on, and put the two nuts to hold the caliper on. And I believe those were 14 millimeter. I'll double check here in a minute. So we'll go ahead and remove this. Let's see if I can do this with two hands. Also, you want to check the uh, the little boot here. Make sure it goes in and out, nice and smooth. I already checked them, um, but that's another one you can you can take these out and clean them up if if they're stuck. And then I just get the bottom one in. <clears throat> torque down each vehicle has its own torque specs and that's it that's how you uh, change your piston caliper and disc brake rotors and we fixed the lug nuts now you might want to just do all of them when you go through all that work but I did not um, but I would recommend if you have the time knock all these out and just get them all replaced since you've gone through all that but hope this video helped. If you liked my channel, please hit the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.